<laughs> well, hello there. It's been quite a while since we've spoken, hasn't it? I think now would be the perfect time to read a story, too. Today's story is called Diamond in the Rough. And now I shall read the description. After the gala, Applejack has had a little too much to drink, and Rarity agrees to escort her home. But then, much to Rarity's embarrassment, Applejack decides that right then and there is the perfect time to confront the unicorn about their true feelings for one another. Let's get to reading, shall we? The drink was a glacé of iced punch and tasted like some kind of blend of citrus and other fruit flavors. It was completely unlike anything Applejack had ever tasted before, and it was delicious. Although it burned her throat a little on the first sip, she found that a second sip of the cool drink soothed that, and before she knew it she'd drunk the whole thing and was getting another. Upon leaving the gala, the six of them had hung out for a while at Pony Jazz for Spike's benefit. After all, he just wanted them to spend some time together in his hometown, and they couldn't really deny him that. He was just a kid. But as the night went on, and eventually Celestia herself had decided to retire, Twilight decided that it was time to put him to bed. And once they were free of their underage charge, they decided to go somewhere a little more grown up. Still at the, ga the gala finery, the six of them had together found a quiet, cozy little pub to spend the night. Somehow, it had much more welcoming atmosphere than the ball they had just abandoned. It wasn't too crowded. Small groups of friends sat around every table, talking and laughing and eating and drinking. They themselves had, had chosen a more private table in the corner, far from the other customers. Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash were having a contest to see who could eat the most plates of nachos, having apparently already gotten over the disastrous evening. Fluttershy looked, looked haggard, staring off into space and not touching her food, mouth occasionally twitching. The others had silently agreed not to ask her if she was okay, remembering the look on her face when she charged into the ballroom earlier. Twilight, on the other hand, looked satisfied enough with how the night had ended. Sitting prim primly upright, eyes closed in concentration as she was mentally composing another letter to her mentor. Rarity, on the other hand, ripped off her tiara, sulking, the moment they'd, they'd set, sat down. Sorry, there was a, there was a, a typo here said sad instead of sat. But let us continue. When they'd ordered their food and drinks, they'd ordered something with a long, exotic name. One of her fancy hoity-toity city sophisticated drinks. And on an impulse, Applejack had ordered the same. When the drinks arrived, Rarity had looked at her oddly, but Applejack ignored her opting instead to focus on the cup as she tried to figure out how an earth penny was meant to drink it. Well, with her hands, obviously, her hooves, obviously, you could pick stuff up. Durr. And now, after what felt like hours had passed, here she was ordering yet another round, taking another deep sip of whatever it was. Applejack, perhaps you should be drinking the in moderation," Rarity suggested quietly, casting her side her side glance. Bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> At first, Applejack didn't, couldn't answer. A cold burn num numbed her mouth and throat. Her hooves on the table suddenly seemed a long way away from her body, and Rarity's voice seemed strangely distant. She tried to come up with something clever to say, but her thoughts were getting all tangled. No, I'm fine, she finally responded with great effort. 
Yes, preachy. <laughs> Most unladylike, Rarity sniffed, taking another sip of her own drink. I'll have you know that getting inebriated in public is a sign of loss of control and a surefire way to social ruin. I reckon I don't really give a damn about that. <laughs> Twilight had taken out a notebook and quill from somewhere and had begun to take notes on something. No pony bothered to ask her what she was doing or why she'd been she had writing tools on her at all. She was utterly lost in her task. At some point Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie had left the table and nobody bothered to ask where they'd gone. Fluttershy was joylessly pounding down a shot after shot like an old bitter alcoholic. A glazed look in her eyes as she glowered at the table. Well, this is not, it looks like a bus. Applejack finally slurred with great effort. She felt the room lurch as she stood up. I guess I'll just be heading back home for now. See y'all later. <laughs> Applejack, you cannot be serious, Rarity interrupted. You can barely stand. How in a question are you planning to get all the way out to Sweet Apple Acres on your own? Ba walking <laughs> Applejack said slowly. Words were getting more and more difficult, and the, wor and the room almost seemed like it was spinning. She took a step forward, but lost her balance and started to pitch forward. Before she could land on her face, a rush of unicorn magic caught her and lit righted her. Applejack, as a good friend, I cannot possibly allow you to head outside in this condition. You are not well, and I will escort you back to home, <laughs> Rarity said firmly, stepping away from her seat and taking a place beside Applejack. Twilight Fluttershy, I bid you a good night. We shall see you in the morning, I suppose. Fluttershy grunted an incomprehensible response before taking another shot, and Twilight only nodded, a million miles away. Hey. <laughs> Applejack so said suddenly, where's, where's the other two? They, they, aw, oh, darn it. What's wrong with my mouth? I don't... Come along now, Rarity interrupted primly, dragging Applejack along with her magic. Before you, before you make another f even bigger fool of yourself. I am a failure at reading. <laughs> we are now past eight minutes now. I'd like to tell my readers how much time they have been listening to my babbling. Once they were outside, a cool night air hit Applejack like a slap in the face and she stumbled forward in a daze, swaying. The air was crisp and clean, and the sky was clear, leaving nothing to mask the lovely silver moon or countless glaring stars. Look at that! She sh suddenly shouted, raising her head to look at the sky. It's just like Twilight's dress, all, all sparkling. Oh, hey! It's, it's, like, it's like Twilight Sparkle, her name. I get it. Applejack, you're embarrassing me, Rarity said curtly. I have no idea what curtly means. So, fuck that. <coughs> Applejack turned her head and blinked into a pair of very wide, very frowning blue eyes. <laughs> she hiccuped again, then made a profound discovery. I'm drunk, <laughs> she announced. Rarity sighed and began to magically push Applejack forward again. I can tell, she muttered, half under her breath. Transition. Sweet Apple Acres was a ways out of town, meaning that it would be a long, arduous walk with the drunken Applejack. He was getting more and more on Rarity's nerves with every passing moment. Applejack had already frustratingly unconcerned with what others thought of her. Even when sober, she was far too open and loud about what she did. 
never seeming to care whether any pony else listened to her. Heard her. Me. This was the complete opposite of of the fastidious rarity who spent nearly every working moment striving to make the best impression possible to every pony around. Drunken Applejack, on the other hand, was far, far worse. Normally, she didn't seem especially bothered with what she did in public, but at the moment it seemed like she was actively going out of her way to, to call out as much attention to herself as possible. Rarity at least knew how to regulate her behavior when drinking, although admittedly she could fe already feel a headache setting in from the alcohol she'd taken earlier. She was only half listening to Applejack's ramblings, trying to ignore the way she'd slung her hoof around Rarity's neck as she led her home, or the way she kept inexplicably nuzzling against her. Shy! <laughs> Applejack suddenly drawled, pulling back. What what are you doing? Rarity asked, irritated. Although Applejack had stopped, she kept walking, expecting her to fall. Come on, I can see your barn just over that hill. No, no way, I'm not budging another step until I tell you something. Uh oh, for, for what? What do you want? That, Prince Sears, did, did you two dance together? The question came completely out of nowhere, and Rarity did a double take, startled. Applejack stood behind her, alone on the road, bathed in moonlight, a stoic expression on her face even as she swayed slightly. She looked at so ridiculously serious, despite the thick stench of alcohol surrounding her, that Rarity almost wanted to laugh. And so she did, albeit softly, as she approached Applejack, trying to entice her forward again. Oh, come now, Applejack. What does that have to do with anything? Did he kiss you? Rarity froze. Applejack glared. Applejack, really? I told you, till you answer me, I ain't budging. The two of them fa stood face to face on the winding dirt road back to Sweet Apple Acres, both of them now bathed in Luna's soft light. No, Rarity finally answered. No, we did not. He was the least charming prince I'd ever met, very ungentlemanly. Don't you remember when we s when we stopped by your stand? He didn't even offer to pay. Applejack blinked. Oh yeah, I forgot about that part. My, I do quite a good drunken southerner, don't I? It was very noble of you to give us uh, the fritters for free, though. But no, we did not. We did not dance or kiss. And if we n never see him again, it will be too soon. Now, will you just follow me? I could see your house. Did you dance at all? Applejack's comically serious ex uh, expression was now replaced with one of the deepest concern, and again, Rarity didn't know how to answer. Well, I, I suppose not. Well, that's too bad. I know you really wanted to, to dance with your prince and all. Well, I suppose we'll have to wait until next year, Rarity answered lightly. Now, if we can just... You don't have to wait. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll dance with you. The night was utterly silent except for the soft rushing of the leaves and the gentle night wind and the occasional chirp of a cricket. Applejack, Rarity said carefully. She had to be delicate as she knew that much even though she never exactly been in a situation like this before. That's a very kind offer, but I think I'm fine for tonight. Why don't we just... I ain't hot good enough for you? Applejack interrupted again. It looked like Rarity wasn't going to be allowed to finish any sentences tonight. I know I ain't no handsome stallion or even a sophisticated city pony. And I'm just a simple old country bumpkin. But, but, Applejack... It continued earnestly, even though she was tripping over her own words. Her expression was one of such wide-eyed innocence that Rarity almost felt her heart stop, until Applejack suddenly scowled, kicked the ground, and shouted, "Oh God, found it! I 
I don't remember what I was going to say! Applejack, maybe you should go home and get a good night's sleep. You'll probably have a terrible hangover tomorrow, and it would be best if you get to bed right away. I ain't that drunk. Well, you're obviously not sober either, Rarity snapped. We are passing fifteen minutes now. Another silence fell over the two of them. This time, though, Rarity could see the heads reflected in Applejack's eyes. So, you think I don't mean it? You sure know how to make a pony feel like nothing rare. Applejack, I didn't mean... I'm not trying to be rude. It's just that it's very late and I've had a lot to drink. And I don't want you to say things you'll regret. There. It's you've had a lot to drink. Slight correction. Let's continue. I'm the element of honesty, Rare, in case you forgot, and I never say nothing I don't mean 100%. And how scandalous this would be if any pony was listening to this, Rarity thought br briefly. Then she was suddenly ashamed, struck by guilt. Applejack, drunk or not, wouldn't care either way whether any pony heard what she was saying, so why would Rarity? Lost in thought, Rarity didn't even notice Applejack approach into her until she felt her sud settle in to lean against her. She felt warm to Rarity's surprise. Applejack seemed to fit perfectly, as if they were both molded for the express purpose of leaning against one another. Her memory flashed to the sleepover at twilight during the storm telling ghost stories and clinging to each other in fear. Even then, in the midst of an argument, and in the heat of the moment, Rarity had found herself thinking of that, uh, thinking that holding an Applejack felt strangely... right. I don't... I know you think this is the drink talking. Applejack slurred into her ear. But I like you a lot, Rare. I don't mind if you think I'm gonna forget about this tomorrow, because I know I won't. The unicorn's heart was pounding. Transition. When she had first met Applejack, her first thought had been, she could be beautiful. Applejack, for all her roughness, had the potential to be quite the lady if she'd want to do so. Her face was simple and pretty, eyes wide and laughing, and the exact same shade of green as the orchards in summer. Her build strong and supple. If she'd just clean herself a little, clean herself up a little bit, maybe she'd maybe. When I mess up, I mess up good. If she cleaned herself up a bit, maybe, maybe did something with that soft golden mane of hers, she could have easily passed for a sophisticated mane hat knight. And yet she chose not to, for the simple reason that she had no interest in pretending to be something she wasn't. She was like a diamond in the rough. If polished, she could truly dazzle. And yet she seemed to have no desire to leave that rough. This caused Rarity to end her of Learn to read, you prick! <laughs> I don't know how to read. Goodbye. I'm going to eat really quick and then I'm going to uh, uh, continue the recording. This caused Rarity to no end. Uh... This caused Rarity no end of irritation, simply because Rarity craved beauty and longed for perfection in all things and couldn't understand why some pony wouldn't be the same way. She was always trying to get Applejack to dress up a little, or maybe comb that, fi comb that fine yellow hair, or maybe just uh, try the slightest bit of makeup uh, to highlight her fine bone structure, but Applejack 
it rejected every suggestion. After all, Applejack was nothing if not honest about who she truly was. Why try and dress up the country pony? Oops, I forgot my forgot the um voice I was doing. My accent. But over time but over time, uh Rarity had gotten over it and grown to accept Applejack's attitude, even if it was, even if as it frustrated her, and finally began to appreciate the way she managed to, sh to shine, even without the polish Rarity had envisioned for her. Applejack was a friend, a very, very dear friend, an exasperating one at, that she was constantly arguing with. But a friend nonetheless, and she was drunk. It was Rarity's responsibility to get her home, because that was what a good friend did. It would be wrong to take advantage of her in a situation like this, when Applejack was in such a vulnerable position. But even though her, fr her head recognized how wrong it was, her heart seemed to disagree. The drinks from earlier fear fueled her courage and vanquished any doubts or second thoughts about she might have had. And suddenly they were pressed up against each other, and she was tasting Applejack. A wonderful blend of cinnamon and apples and warmth, just the way Rarity had always imagined she'd taste, ever since the sleepover, ever since they'd first held each other and shared a bed and Rarity had first begun to experience those idle daydreams. Man, I don't feel like doing the fucking voice anymore. I, I just started to fail at the voice anyway. I was, I was doing something earlier. It sounded great. And then after my break, I just couldn't do it anymore. When they finally pulled away, they were both panting. Applejack was grinning the that lazy, crooked grin, looking satisfied. In contrast, Rarity's eyes were wide with shock from what she had just done. I can't believe I just... I'm ready to go home now, Applejack whispered, leaning close to Rarity's he ear and not whispering at all. <laughs> She could feel that Applejack smiling while she spoke. <sighs> Sorry, I burped. Burped a little bit. Uh, breath warm on her neck. Do you want to come with me? <laughs> Rarity quickly stepped back and Applejack almost fell over until Rarity caught her with her magic. What in the hay? She d angry demanded. What did you do that for? I I won't do this right now because you're n you're not quite in a right state of mind, and that would be exceedingly wrong of of me. I need to stop stuttering. <laughs> Rarity began primly smoothing out her n now considerably rumpled dress with her hoops. But, she continued, her voice halting slightly, if, if you still feel the same way tomorrow, and that wasn't the, just the drink speaking, then perhaps we can try. We can try being an us. It took a moment for her words to sink in, but when they did, Applejack grinned. I guess I'll see you tomorrow then, Rare. Perhaps if you haven't completely forgotten this incident by then. I bet you I won't. I doubt that. But we'll see. Until then, we could have been at Sweet Apple Acres ages ago. Let's go. They walked side by side in silence for a little while, hooves crunching the ground as they trotted along. Rarity held herself with as much dignity as she could muster even as her heart was still racing from the, from the kiss. But Applejack seemed considerably more easy now, grinning foolishly to herself and giggling in a silly, drunken way, still swaying even now. When they finally reached the main house, Applejack was poised to go inside before turning to Rarity. <clears throat> 
help me inside? She asked with what was presumably her best imitation of a coy smile. Applejack, honestly, Rarity scolded. I just... We don't we don't have to do nothing. I just want, don't want to be alone yet. And every pony else is probably asleep. Rarity looked away, fidgeting with her dress. As beautiful as it was, it was really starting to get on her nerves. It was making it far too difficult to walk and move. It wouldn't be an entirely bad thing to shed it for some reason. I suppose... She finally answered, not meeting Applejack's eyes. With another lazy grin, Applejack opened the door for Rarity, even though the unicorn could have just held it open with her magic, nodding her head slightly with a mock bow. Very elegant, Rarity thought, with a small smile in response, stepping through the entrance, and Applejack followed, kicking the door shut behind her. <clears throat> Yet another transition. Applejack woke up feeling terrible in body and spirit. Her mouth tasted strange, dry, and thick somehow, and her head was pounding as if some pony was going at it with a hammer. Her entire body ached, even her eyes. It was a struggle just to sit up. The lights were too bright, and she flinched when she opened her eyes. It only made her headache worse. When her vision cleared, she noticed a very familiar-looking white unicorn crawled up on the sofa, fast asleep. What in tarnation? <clears throat> Alright. Thank you, viewers, for listening to this reading of Diamond in the Rough. Please send me suggestions of complete fan fictions to read, and I'll read them. Click the button above to subscribe, like the video, and comment, and uh, uh, do other stuff too, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Bye.